dear preacher that I used to love to listen to, Brother Shambach, talked about this woman one time, brought her husband to one of his tent meetings in a feed sack. Brought him in and dumped him out. Said he just wasn't nothing but a rack of bones. Didn't weigh nothing. She dumped him out there and she said, now, preacher, do your thing. He said, what do you say? He said, do your thing. He said, you're a man of God. And Brother Shambach said it made him kind of mad at first, but knew that she was counting on him. He said, he got down there. He said, it wasn't just a few months that man practically carried his wife to a tent meeting. God had raised him up and changed him. He said, Good God. Not a bit discouraged anymore. You I like Paul. Acts chapter 9, and I'm going to run over a few chapters and read where he was with Festus. Just going to refresh our memory about Brother Paul. Church, it ain't what we used to be. But as Ronnie was talking about, Enduring, <laughs> and uh, we, uh, if we're faithful to the end, and I'm glad for the Lord, aren't you? Oh yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's wonderful. I sure wish somebody else testify. We're just about where we need to be. Yeah. Good question. The Bible said. Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went into the high priest. Desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this wave, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Give me a little bit more money. As he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly there would shine round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, heard a voice saying unto him, oh, Saul, Amen. why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Had the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. The men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. Saul rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand brought him into Damascus. He was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the street, which is called Straight. Inquire in the house of Judas of one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lee, don't you imagine that was a beautiful sight? Oh, yeah. I'm talking about a man in a matter of just two or three days that turned completely around. Yeah. Saul was feared by the Christian, by the sure. church. Sure. He was a threat to him. Yeah. Don't you, to, wouldn't you, I've, I've thought so many times, wouldn't you like to hurt him praying? Oh, yeah. Why, automatically, when he rose up from the ground, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Yeah. Automatically. See, the Lord don't take a whole lot of time. Nope. He can turn around. And said, Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call thy name. 
But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, <laughs> the Lord, even Jesus, Lee, he hadn't even talked to him yet, hadn't heard his testimony. But he walked in the house, he trusted the Lord. He sure did. He wasn't scared of it, nope. civil. He walked in the house and automatically Terry called him Brother Saul. Brother, yep. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the, in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Now I want to go over to chapter 24. Paul, don't, we don't talk a whole lot about Paul being before Festus. Reading in uh, verse 10. Paul, after the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went to Jerusalem for to worship. They neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call hearsay, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, yeah. both of the just and the unjust. Yeah. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offering. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee and object if they had ought against me. Yeah. Or else let the same here say, if they had found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council. Except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among oh, them. Yeah. Amen. Touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. Yeah. I want you to get this. This is, but and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, "When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter." He commanded a certain centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come to him. Yep. After certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. As he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a, a convenient season, I will call for thee. He also, he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus, came into Felix's room. And Felix, willing to shoot the Jews at pleasure, let Paul bound. You think about that. Yeah. Felix, when he heard him uh, 
speak, he trembled Lee, and he liked what Paul had to say. Yeah, sure did. But another example of somebody that the Bible don't record of him accepting what Paul had to say. You're right. But did that hinder Paul? Paul kept right on going. You're right. Paul was uh, well convinced of his testimony. Yeah. He was, uh, his mind was made up that God was able to keep him. Yeah. And uh, as Ronnie was talking about him being able to keep that which we committed unto him, the Bible went on to say against that day. And, uh, but Paul kept right on going, and that's what we got to do. Right. But you think of that day, he wanted to hear. And that's the time yeah. that we're living in today. If folks like to hear it, Bobby, but they don't want to submit to it. Right. But I tell you what, I'm glad I submitted to it, aren't you? I'm glad for him. Let us pray. Father, we come.